What is up? I'm Wanna Turtle, and today we're going to be doing another market watch for Pokemon TCG. We're going to be going through Hidden Fates and a new topic that is Team or the Rocket Set, Team Rocket Set, and we're going to be covering First Edition because that's actually a set that I've completed <laughs> a PSA 9 set of for 9 level at least. Um, real quick, apologies there was no video yesterday. I actually did record something for Pokemon Masters for the new Sync pair that got announced, but uh, man, I've just been not been super enthusiastic about that game, so I wasn't happy about how the content came, or how the video came out, so I ended up scrapping that. So apologies for a bit of a delay in content, but let's go over to look at some marketplace stuff. The first thing we're going to hit is this subreddit. I mentioned this in a previous video, and a couple people asked about it, so I want to mention it quickly again. PKMN TCG deals. That is where I figure find most of my deals that I pick up for as far as sealed product goes. And especially these days with Hidden Fates, you know, a lot of people have been saying that they've been struggling to find it in stores. And to be honest, I'm in that category. Almost all of my product comes from online vendors. And usually this site is how I realize that, or if someone bubbles up that, oh, you know, Target has it and they also have this cool promo. GameStop has it in stock, Walmart, blah, blah, blah. And Although this is, um, you know, this is recorded a day in advance, at the time of recording, look, the premium, the premium collection's in stock at Walmart. Let's see, although this was 55 minutes ago. These things sell out super fast. Ah, oh, and they even still have it. So this is a perfect example. You kind of have to monitor this subreddit pretty closely. You know, I'll refresh it every, whenever I get back to my desk when I work or something, or whenever I return to my computer from doing something, I'll just do a quick refresh, see if there's any new deals. So that would be my number one recommendation for you guys, especially if you're having trouble picking up Hidden Fates sealed products. But on the topic of Hidden Fates, and uh, kind of when it's like, oh, should I buy a sealed product or should I buy singles? At this point, 100% singles. Prices, I think a lot of prices are starting to bottom out at this point. Let's take a look at TCG player. We're gonna ignore, oh man, although Charizard for 285? What? All right, we're, we're coming back to that one. But let's hit the other the expensive one. So Tapu Lele, it's getting pretty low. Looks like you can pick up, what is this? There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's getting close to $30. Not too bad if if that's like the last card you need for a collection. I think it's fine to bite that bullet. Ultimately, I think it'll continue to go down. If we take a look at all the other Guardians, they're basically under 20. I think under 20 for a gold card, which that supposed pull rate is like 1 out of 100, is definitely worth it. And then we take a look at some of the other shinies. Umbreon still hovering around that mid-20. Same thing for Sylveon. Not, not surprising. And then all the... These, um... Stadiums, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, 15 bucks for those, I think that's perfectly fine. Same thing for Guzma and the rest of these shinies. So, it seems like the evolutions are the only ones that are still hovering, kind of like a questionable lark mark. Everything else, even Shrine of Punishment, wow, 120 for, to pick up a Shrine of Punishment, that is amazing. I, if if I still needed that, I'd probably pick it up right there. The two that are still holding, or Cynthia is still holding just fine around that $60 mark. This is just just because it's still super relevant, still super good in standard. And probably until rotation, maybe they'll stay that way. Uh, Cynthia is one, if it was one I was missing in my collection, I think I would probably hold off. You know, maybe I will pull it from just doing openings. And then of course, Charizard, oh! Spoiler alert, if you haven't checked out our latest Pokeball collection, spoiler in three, two, one. We managed to pull one. I am still so psyched, I can't believe it. And uh, the value is still going down, which is fine. I'm not sure how they calculate the market price before and just crazy high still. TCG player, they have broken 300. It's about time. Took longer than I was expecting. Again, if I had to guess where it'll bottom out, my guess would be 200 between Reshizard and uh, Burning Shadows Charizard. Yes, this thing is probably more hyped than Burning Shadows Charizard, but this thing, the price point per pack is simply higher. And I think that'll keep it around that $200 price, par price point. Let's go to eBay. So we mentioned Cynthia earlier. Let's just take a look at sold listings. So this it's possible to get it for under fifty dollars, unless it's like the uh, no. You know, I'm, I'm even if it's the last card, maybe I would pick it up. Otherwise, I'll probably just wait. And Tapu Lele, um, this one I probably. If I was just like, oh, I gotta finish this set, I'd probably pull the trigger at, you know, the high 20s. Definitely none of this $45 stuff, you know, definitely 
when there are sold listings for under 20, um, to me that's perfectly, I would do that in a heartbeat if it was like a buy it, buy it now for 20. Like, all right, let's just pick it up, get it over with. Trying to punishment, we kind of went over this earlier. Actually, it's almost these sound, sound kind of high. Like TCG player has them for under 20. Yeah, this 15 seems about right. Again, all the stadiums, it, I feel like that's just a good deal. Like these stadiums are beautiful. Shrine of Punch specifically, there's no other, um, you know, full art printing of it. And I do think it'll be a really good card. Potentially, there's some cool synergies to come out in Cosmic Eclipse. Finally, of course, Shiny Charizard. The PSAs are starting to flood the market. We're actually going to pull up a pop report from PSA to take a look at how the ratios are going between 10s, 9s, and 8s. And it is so skewed to 10s. It's like the print quality is actually super good for Hidden Fates right now. And so to have, all right, so currently two 8s, 25 9s, and then 98 10s. That is, let's see, 125. So that's like 80% is PSA 10 like the pre quality is super good right now and you know that will obviously affect prices where you know you got a 10 like who doesn't have a 10 that had something graded only 27 unlucky people that you know got a maybe super off center or something uh, and the prices will reflect that and kind of like the BGS wave happened it was like first to market kind of thing and then the PSA 10s came I think they maybe like an upper end of like 3,000 and then I was like all right well there actually there's a bunch of these let's go to 2,000 and then a thousand now we're already under 700 for a card that still working breaking that $300 barrier um so like as far as graded ones 10s kind of like the standard I usually I'm okay with a nine but for this card especially when I have two already like I think if I were to buy, I wouldn't even bother with 9, I would just go straight for 10, wait for it to continue to go down. Definitely people are going to keep sending those ins, and we're going to keep getting 10s, which is great. So I found that very interesting. The PSA 10 has already broken that $700 mark. And scrolling down, we do have still working on that 300 threshold for the raw cards. So my speculation, continue to go down. All right, let's shift over to a new topic that is first edition rockets. And again, one reason I really like to talk about this is because it's one I actually completed. Here is my collection of PSA 9 first edition. Took me a while to pick those up. And however, I will say that it wasn't that expensive. There's a couple that are a little bit tough, but it's not too bad. Let's start with a binder collection first. Never underestimate how cool it is to have a binder collection, especially when it comes to like binder collections are the only things of mine that see the light of day most of the time most of my PSA stuff are in storage especially the expensive ones and all right let's take a look PR these are these are not first edition or anything but let's just take a look how much can we get a raw Charizard for let's let's settle for let's settle for light play let's just take a look and we don't care about first edition less than $20 for a light played hollow foil Charizard not bad not bad and let's see let's turn on the first edition first edition version and it does go up to 66 so that's definitely not cheap um, so if the first edition will be obviously significantly more but Charizard is definitely going to be by far leaps and bounds the most expensive card let's take a look at Blastoise which is undoubtedly number two and let's turn on, oh yeah, we already have first edition and that one is already down to 24 on TCG player. So, you know, to complete a binder collection, top two cards under a hundred dollars, that sounds not too bad for me when it comes to like, oh, do I complete my Hidden Fates collection or do I complete a collection from, what is this, 1999 still? I think so. Um, so, binder collection, very affordable for such a old set. Let's take a look at PSA prices. So we have our filters are set for first edition and last sale for PSA 9. Uh, we'll go right off the bat, let's hit the big two. Charizard, 155, Dark Blastoise, 100. So, and then the rest of them, but then let's focus, check the rest of them. Like, sure, Alakazam is kind of high at 43, but then everything else is under that. Machamp, 42, that sounds surprisingly expensive. I bet that's kind of like a one-off. Dark Duck Trio, poor guys. Less than $10 for that, that's a good deal. And um, one interesting thing about this set is you do have to go down to the bottom because they this is the first secret rare. And this one was actually pr 
probably kind of a well-kept secret compared to everything that has a secret rare these days. I feel like I'm about to sneeze, but I think we already have these up. So let's take a look at the Charizard. Actually, let's go to that Raichu first because we're already on that topic. Dark Raichu, number 83. That's another cool thing about these earlier sets. You know, there's none of this 200-something cards. Uh, yeah, there's only 150 in the set, but to collect all the secret rares, you have to collect like 300 cards or something crazy like that. This set only had 82 cards with this Dark Raichu as a secret. Let's see, a pop report, 183 10s, 709s. Therefore, 9's probably not that expensive, right? And I think the numbers kind of reflect that. The eight, last eights were around 30. To be honest, I, for stuff like this, I'd probably steer away from eight. I think it's fine to go with nine, even if it's the first edition. And actually, this thing is on quite the uptick. I feel like, you know, earlier in the year, let's actually just remove this one. You could get it for like under $50. And for some reason, things are, it's gone quite an uptick, uh, even more so than the 10. I'm not sure when I'll complete the 10 select the set. It'll probably be a while. I'll probably want to complete some other ones before I jump back to PSA 10 for Rocket. But a PSA 9 Dark Raichu is on the upswing, but early this year, yeah, under $50. It's pretty good. Let's go back to Charizard. Take a look at this pop report. And again, very skewed towards the 9. And that's what we're talking about when we say the print quality is just super good for Hidden Fates. Is I feel like this is a typical, like... Uh, you know ratio where you have actually even this is kind of like generous on the 10 side I bet I think like jungle or base and uh, jungle or it's more swords like uh, you know it's kind of like you ramps up as you go versus the spike being at nine so but 300 less than 400 tens and a thousand nines that's a lot of nines let's drop the eights again let's see what we're looking at Ooh, another huge spike. I wonder if this is the Hidden Fates, kind of like the, just the general Charizard effect, where the newest Charizard has so much hype and people are like, oh, you know what, let me pick up a different Charizard. Dark Charizard. The cool thing about Dark Charizard, it's the second printing of Charizard. That's the second ever first edition Charizard that you could pick up in English. And this is, I wonder if this is just that effect. I don't remember when Hidden Fates came out, was it May or something like that? But and then it kind of just went up. Before that, 500 for a PSA 10. And let's just take a look at 9. This one's on an upswing too. So Rocket is kind of booming in popularity in the past six or so months, where not too long ago you could pick one up for just over $100. We are getting close to that 150 mark pretty consistently. Let's take a look at eBay. So again, raw cards. Uh, who knows how good condition this is, but $22, it's a good deal. Especially if you're gonna slap in a binder. No one did not really scrutinize the uh, quality of it. Uh, this one's non-hollow, I'm guessing if it's under 100. That's one thing to just to remember before you impulse buy anything, this is in the era of hollows and non-hollows of the same card. So just take a look, be careful. They always will say hollow for the correct listings. And here's that 150. And actually, maybe that's about what we're, what the? Oh, this is not hollow again. But occasionally, there are ones that squeak out for $100. That is a good pickup. This is what it, let's just take a look at the, um, getting what's in the pick. What is in the pick? Wow, yeah. So yeah, if you're careful, if you're patient, you can get them for, you know, around $100. And then the rest of them will be around that 150 mark. I think when I bought a bunch of mine, I think it was over a year ago. So I think it was about that $100 mark. And things have, it has aged well so far, at least in the past year or so. And so that's it for today. Pretty quick. I didn't want to do drone on for that long. But themes of the day. Subscribe to this subreddit, especially if you are still having trouble finding Hidden Fates. And they have a lot of good, like, whenever there's a flash sale on eBay, someone will bubble it up and stuff like that. Whenever a vendor, Target, Game Nerds, whatever has stuff, this is how I find out. I don't monitor their vendors, I just monitor this subreddit. Hidden Fates, Charizard breaking that $300 mark, which is awesome. I'm guessing $200 is where it's going to settle. Uh, the rest of the stuff, Cynthia holding strong. I'll be patient on filling her in my collection uh, if I can't pull her myself. Rocket. Uh, binder collection, very cheap. 
PSA 9 first edition, you know, 250 for like the, the top two cards and then the rest of it will be about less than $30 on average for the rest of the set. So which in my opinion is a great pickup. Uh, we'll appreciate probably very slowly like this card's already like 20, 20 years old and it's still like most of them are under $40 so probably I don't think it'll ever depreciate, let's put it that way. So I think it's a good place to kind of like uh, build out your collection without it being like, oh yeah, I bought this Charizard for $10,000 and now it's, I could probably resell it for 4000 So nothing crazy like that will happen to your money. So as always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are. If there's a topic you would like to see covered on these videos, let me know in a comment down below. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe all down below. I'm Wanna Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.